I am in London this week to promote my new book called May We Be Forgiven. To write a book, you spend so many years sort of sitting by yourself at a desk. So it's really nice because you meet people who are very enthusiastic about your work. It often seems to mean a lot to them, which is a kick for me. I mean, it gives me great joy because when you're writing it, you just don't have any sense of in what way the book is going to have meaning for other people. The world of May We Be Forgiven starts off with the story of two brothers, Harry and George, and really sort of taps into kind of a Cain and Abel, almost sort of biblical aspect of the intensity of the jealousy and the competitiveness and, and really the passion between brothers in a family, and really a much, much larger story about the state of the world that we live in. The ideas always start for me with what I describe to people as nonfiction. So in that sense of thinking about brothers in a very kind of almost psychological way and thinking about those relationships and how within a family there can be you know, enormous kinds of tension. So there's that aspect, which is very much an, an intellectual and a mental aspect. And then as I begin to sort of think about, okay, so these are the ideas I'm interested in, then it becomes who are the people? And then I think what really, for lack of a word, becomes animated for me is when I actually put them in a place. I can't probably write anything until I can see it. So I take lots of notes and there's lots of sort of concepts, but the actual telling of the story is a very sort of visual or cinematic kind of thing in my own head. Traditionally, children in, in literature and in film have essentially played sort of walk-on roles, and they're there either as props or you know, to reflect other things, but I actually have enormous respect for children as people. I like thinking about the world through their eyes and the things about a child's point of view that both limit what they're able to tell us, but also how their perspective kind of enhances how we're able to see things. The moment that we're living in is so specifically time and date stamped, and the sort of speed at which technology is changing our lives and the way we relate, I felt like it was important to actually try to find language and imagination for that. I think that technology really has absolutely changed our lives and that as humans, we haven't even really caught up to what that impact is. I like the ways in which we view photos or the planes of a photograph are different from how we view reality. I do think very visually, so I collect photographs, you know, I'm looking at things all the time. What I'm looking for are family photographs and old postcards that people have sent. So I collect them and then very often when I'm trying to work with young writers and it's very hard to get them to just sort of use their imaginations, I'll give them photographs and we'll talk about who's in the photograph, how would you write about it. I truly am a fiction writer. I work from my imagination. I spend a lot of time thinking about other people's experiences. I'm one of those people who will look at people wherever I'm going or on public transportation, but I try literally from looking at their bodies, looking at their clothing, looking at what they're doing, to think about who they are and importantly how they see themselves. Because one of the things that I learned a long time ago as a writer is how I see somebody is one thing, but that's all coming through my experience. But I also really try to think about like Harry and George, how do they see each other? How do they see their family? I feel like in terms of my evolution, I guess, you know, part of it is as, as you get older and you achieve a certain level of accomplishment, with that comes a certain kind of freedom, that you're not as concerned about what other people might think, that you're able to take those risks. And then the, the downside of it is, in theory, you know, you're also not as naive about it all. And there's something about those first books. Nobody is watching what you're doing. Nobody is particularly judging what you're doing. There's a pureness to those. This new book, May We Be Forgiven, feels actually as clean and pure to me as Jack. And I think you see that also in the, in the children in that book and in, the, in, in both of those stories. And I feel really good about that and it feels very much, you know, a coherent narrative between all of the work. It is all a continuation and an evolution.